Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Tom, VA3WBA, wanted to try the the now fad-like chicken wire ground, uh, which you can see multiple videos about up on YouTube. So he cut this short piece of uh, chicken wire. Tom, what are the dimensions of that? You know what? I don't know because it's a leftover material. I Okay, it looks it. to my eye like it's about two and a half feet we by probably measure. about seven or eight feet uh, I measure long. It quickly so and, and my face, Tom's so. going to measure it. And while he's doing that, uh, so he's he went to the dollar store and bought a pie tin. 36 inch 36 wide. inch wide. Okay, so that's actually three feet wide. 36 by... By 105. 105. So that's almost nine feet. Uh, there you go. So he's got the uh, the pie tin set up in the center. Now, Tom, you've got your counterpoise wire coming off. Is that actually connected to the it chicken is wire? Connected. So that's what I wanted to do to see if um, we can we can disconnect it and see if it makes a difference. Okay. There is actually wire connected. This galvanic connection. Did you just wrap it around? Did you yeah, use an alligator wrap it around. I didn't put any effort in this. It. Like, okay. It is what it is. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, on top of that, he's got his uh, magnet mount and the MFJ 1979 whip. And he just tuned the whip without using a tuner. Uh, let's just do this uh, with the analyzer. Here is what he is getting. So it is 1.13 at 21.05. And if you take a look at that graph, you can see we are at, uh, at or below 1.5 to 1 across the entire 15 meter band. That's pretty impressive. And uh, you, you tried it on 20 meters yes. a few minutes ago, and uh, it was it was flat. It was it was flat. It was one to one on, on 20 meters. Beautiful. Oh, that's fantastic. So uh, I, now, I, it, is it efficient? It certainly seems to be. Uh, does it make contact? We're not sure about that. We'll have to put that one to the test. Tom is going to remove the counterpoise cable. We're going to check the SWR again using the rig expert. Let's see what we get. Whoa, yeah, I didn't like that at all. It's 10 to 1. Didn't like that at all. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so the trick is that the chicken wire is essentially connected to the to the to the magnet uh, magnet mount with the short jumper cable. Yeah. The magnet mount is modified, so I have ground right. uh, terminated with a tiny screw. Sure. So once we remove that connection. Our, our, we can try to tune it, but I think de that detuned the whole thing. So if, if I increase the frequency range on this, um, let's just do this, uh, range plus, okay. Yeah, let's just do another scan, uh, increasing the frequency range. And look at that. Yeah, so it's actually resonant at 31 megahertz by removing the counterpoise. Yeah, so that's that's what happened, but it's not close to 1 to 1, it's 1.7. That's right. So actually connecting, so this is the YouTube video I have not seen. Mm -hmm. If someone tried to connect, um, connect the magnet, uh, magnet mount, like I've seen people have some other contraptions and that was connected. Yeah. But here there is a magnet mount, so magnet mount will not work. I can try to extend the whip, so give me and let's see if we can yep. get it okay. closer to... I extended it by one section, let's do... Okay, let's Run do one more analysis switch. again. And now we're down to 24 megahertz. So, but it's still, it's still 1.76. 1 1 so, so you can, you can use it with the magnet mount alone. Yeah. But it will never give you perfect right SWR like close to one I mean this yeah. one is not bad it, as long as your transceiver has some sort of SWR protection circuitry and and, and I mean that's a that's a positive and a negative they, they, they think like up to two if you, you should you should be able to, right but but if you get you get some of these transceivers that have the SWR fold back and yeah. they'll actually reduce your output power and anything yes. over 1.5 so sure. you're not putting out in a lot of power, power in that situation. Yes, yes, yes. So that uh, might that might be a, a right. issue. But it's 
it's clearly I can I can extend it a little bit further and we can see what happens. Let's do another sweep and okay. But but again, we're gonna have probably 1.7 with the magnet mount without without connection. So now we're at 1.9 at 22 megahertz. Yeah. So this is this is it. So it needs to yeah. be it needs to be actually connected. Yeah, that, it's the only way that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so to, to, to make it working, like with right. the magnet mount, you're not going to get yeah. anything close to one-to-one. -to -one. Absolutely. Now, now I am curious, if you were to take that, um, that white counterpoise wire mm -hmm. and you were to put it underneath, uh, like on top of the pie pan, but underneath the magnet mount... That wouldn't, ha that wouldn't help, because essentially what happens is yep. the ground that you have here, yes. and you see the little screws sticking out from the magnet mount, that's the modification I made. Right. So essentially you connect into the screen of the, to the outside of the cable, and it's a connection between pretty much the cable and the chicken wire. Yes. That's why it's working so well. With yeah. just magnetic coupling, it's not working. Even that little pen that I added, this right. is like frying thing. So, but it's magnetic. So even this, it's not helping a lot. All right. So I've got I've got a question for you. Let, let, let's. What about this? I presume you were using the pie pan primarily for stability of the whip, mm -hmm. right? So what if you put the chicken wire in between the pie pan and the magnet mount? I don't think it's gonna, it's still magnetic coupling, so I don't think it's gonna help yeah. much. Probably will improve something since it's gonna be closer. Right. But that frying pan is magnetic, so, mm -hmm. I mean, the distance is slightly, um, slightly longer. Like, I would say it's gonna be a nominal improvement, I would say. Okay. Uh, from, you know, from what we see when we have actually connection uh, between the, the shield of the cable and the chicken wire with the little jumper cable. Mm -hmm. It's not really counterpoise, it's a jumper cable which connects chicken wire to the to the shield of the of the coaxial cable. Right. And I think that's that must have at this point like because the SWR we were getting was great. It was yes. 1.1, yes. 1.09 like yeah. it was really really good for what it, the size of it it's it's mm -hmm. phenomenal. Like it doesn't like what I like about it is it is not taking any space. Like you mm -hmm. can, you can pitch it wherever you right. want. Yeah, it's like you don't have to struggle with bushes and like yeah. trees and branches, saplings. You can just put it if there's a little bit of space and you're good to go. Yeah, interesting. Now, now, just in case I didn't mention this earlier, Tom has uh, he's made a modification to this magnetic mount. He's he's attached a counterpoise terminal to it. Tom, how did you do that? Like, what, what did you do to, uh, to in, internally to the magnet mount? So I think the, the magnet mount, I think it's uh, Workman. Okay. I think that's the brand. Yeah. And what happened is I essentially peeled off, uh, peeled off the, 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 the plastic at the bottom of it. Right. And I soldered a small cable and I drilled the hole and there is a little loop that, that connects shield of the cable with that screw on the magnet mount because I figured out that for certain frequencies like lower frequencies it wasn't working well and, and that option allows me to attach let's say longer counterpoise so I can go beyond that magnetic coupling that is offered on the magnet mount itself it works great for it is designed for like CB radio and this kind right. of stuff so it works great for the higher frequencies mm -hmm. where this magnetic coupling is efficient yeah with lower frequencies magnetic coupling is less efficient and uh, and adding a counterpoise may save the day yeah. it's like 15 meters is sort of like we use that on a van like in, yes, during yes. the field day and it was working great but yep. probably if we try to use like 80 meters hamstick or something it, it would suck. Yeah. It wouldn't be great. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Great experiment here, Tom. Thanks for showing me that. No problem. <clears throat> try whip on 20 meters or try this one on uh, on 20 meters. The... Well, let's, let's give the whip a shot. Let's give whip a shot. Okay. It was res. See the SWR. Oh, it's flat. Flat at fourteen two twenty.
That might be too high because it was at 125 was one one. SWR is still showing us flat. One, two, three, two, three, four. Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike. Okay, there's a Tango Whiskey Mike out there. Roger, Roger, Victor Echo 3, Tango Whiskey Mike, you're 59 Ontario. Thank you very much. You are number 120120. Over. Cop, copy the number 120. Thanks so much and uh, good luck in the contest. Thank you, sir. Same to you and have a happy new year. You too. Contest, CQ Rack Winter Contest, Kilo, Charlie 1. <laughs> well, there you go. Kilo, a contact Charlie, on the Quebec chicken Echo wire Mike, whip. Contest. Special. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 7 3 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.